Hey, what's up? This is Reed. Now that I've just moved into my house, I'm about to set up lots of smart home devices everywhere and it could get chaotic quickly. So I came up with a plan to help it go smoother. I'll share with you my steps that you can implement yourself, whether you're just getting started or you're continuing to build out your smart home. The first step is figuring out what automations you want. And this can be like the most difficult thing, but I try to think of things that I don't wanna do around my house. Like my porch lights. I always forget to turn them on or off. A smart switch and a simple automation makes it so I don't have to worry about it anymore. I brainstormed and wrote down some automations that I want to implement soon, like the exhaust fan in my laundry room to go on when the laundry is going. That way it doesn't get too humid for my networking equipment in the same room. I have a few articles I'll link to that list and explain automations I've done in previous videos. Feel free to use those for inspiration if you want. Just don't be overwhelmed and feel like you have to implement the whole list though. Start small, have fun, and your family will have a way better experience. Oh, by the way, make sure your automations aren't annoying for your family, or cancel culture will have a way different meaning in your house. Hey, did you hear what got canceled? No, wait, what? Oh, the, the doorbell automation? I just turned it off. Another one? Ugh. You can always add more, and even I don't add them all at once, but I'll probably implement a few each week and this time I'm gonna to try to document them in a spreadsheet to keep them more organized. I'll have a note section to quickly see what the automation is doing, then I'll have an issue section for annoyances that might pop up after using the automation, then some ideas to improve it. I'll also have another tab for automations that I had to deactivate and ideas for new automations. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to write everything down, but if you already have a good system, then please let me know. The next planning step is to decide on a platform or hub to use. This will consolidate the smart home apps you need on a regular basis and help devices work together for automations. I did a whole video talking about different hubs that you can go check out, but if you're just getting started, you may want a more simple out of the box solution. Something like an Echo Dot. It's insane how many devices work with Amazon and you can do quite a bit with their routines for automations. What's great is that you can use multiple platforms together. So say you start off with an Echo Dot and then one day you wanna get more advanced with SmartThings or Home Assistant, you can use those two platforms together. I do this all the time. There might be a device like my robot vacuum that is not compatible with my hub, but it is compatible with Amazon. So if I wanna automate that robot vacuum with my hub, I create a way for the hub to trigger an Amazon routine to control that device. With SmartThings, I use virtual switches for this, and for Home Assistant, I use Alexa Media Player. If it seems confusing, it's okay. Just know that you can have multiple platforms that work together. I'm gonna be using a combination of Amazon, SmartThings, and Home Assistant all at the same time, and I'll be sharing how I'm doing that in an upcoming video. After figuring out what platform you wanna go with, the next step is deciding what devices to get. Not all devices are compatible with every hub. You might want to do a quick search to see if the device you're planning on buying is compatible with your current platform or something you may use later. If you already have some smart home devices and they're not compatible, it's not the end of the world. There's usually some workarounds like I mentioned earlier, but it does make things so much easier if they are compatible by default. I did a whole video about growing your smart home and what to look for when buying devices that you may wanna watch if you haven't already. For me, I'm looking at my list of automations that I wanna implement, then figuring out what kind of smart light switches, outlets, sensors, and everything else that I need. My goal is to be strategic on where I place the sensors so I can use as few as possible. You would be surprised on how many automations you can use with just one motion sensor. For example, this motion sensor in the kitchen can be used with lights, of course, but also with the thermostat, with morning routines, it can alert you if you're away in someone's home. Also, if you walk into the room, it can remind you if you haven't done something. The list goes on. If you're like me, you might start off buying some less expensive smart home equipment that might be replaced later. You can always repurpose that less expensive tech to areas of your house that you don't use as much. I try not to get rid of any smart home devices because of this, and I know that's what a hoarder might say, but I promise I'm not a hoarder. Trust me, please. 
I'm not. Everyone, tell my wife that I'm not a hoarder, please. The last step is figuring out a way for everyone to control the smart devices, especially the smart light bulbs, light strips, and outlets. Ideally, a motion sensor or an automation will control the smart light. But what if someone wants to turn off the light manually? Using a smart button or dashboard is ideal because anyone can use it. Versus using a voice assistant or an app, which isn't great for a guest. I'm going to try and have at least one smart button in each room of the house. That might be a very inexpensive IKEA button on a table or a smart light switch from Innovelli or Zeus. Those can run scenes and control smart light bulbs as well. Most of them have magnets, so you can easily put them on refrigerators or other metal surfaces. Then you can just move them around if needed. Now, once you have your plan, if you want to take it a step further, you can make a 3D render of your house and you can put in what you currently have and what you plan on getting for the future. There is free software to do this and it doesn't seem too difficult to do. I'll link some resources in the description on how to do this. And what's cool is that you can import it into your home assistant setup and you can use the map to control your smart home. It's pretty awesome and I plan on doing it once I get more settled into my house. I'll be following these steps as I build out my smart home and I'll be making videos along the way. So make sure you're following the channel to see it all come together. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hey, did you finish all of your homework? Yes. What about all of your smart homework? I already know all of that. Okay, well how do you turn on these lights with your voice? Turn on family room lights. It's living room lights. You have a lot of studying to do. Dad.